Hey there, everybody. Welcome into the Ben Maynard program. Thanks for being here. Before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping to take care of. As you know, this program is available on multiple podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Spotify. Or you can just search the Ben Maynard program. You'll have several options to choose from. Go to Buzzsprout because that's where my website is. Click on it and there you go. You're set. Uh, but obviously, if you can't resist all this stuff right here, then uh, watch on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, then please subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. All right. I like comments. You know that. Last but not least, follow me on Instagram, Ben Maynard Program. So plenty of ways to take in this show for your dancing and listening pleasure. And with that, we'll recap the last episode. That was my daughter, Tess, coming in studio. That was a lot of fun. It really, really was. Um, I hope you've had an opportunity to watch it or listen to it. If you haven't, take advantage of it. It's some good conversation. It didn't go exactly as I thought it was going to go. Um, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Um, I just was hoping it would go somewhere else and it didn't, and we weren't going to force the issue, but it was good. It was, it was some good conversation. She's a, she's a, she's a great young woman and she's smart and she's got a lot going for her. So, um, it, you know, like I said, I, I don't, um, it kind of didn't go where I wanted it to, but it's still really good. It's good conversation. The one thing I did want to get from it, and, and we did, was uh, I wanted to get her perspective on on uh, my relationship, mine and Catherine's relationship. So we got through that, and it was great. She's just she's just awesome. It was a lot of fun. And we'll get her back on the program at some point, in some way, some form or fashion. Who knows? Um. But uh, before we get started, it is National Sloppy Joe Day, the day after St. Patrick's Day. Yes, we're recording the day after St. Patrick's Day uh, for two reasons. One, uh, because I needed to get this done. And two, I couldn't record yesterday because... Um, I was called in to work uh, yesterday afternoon. I think I got a call about 12.30, 1 o'clock. I think it was about 12.30, asking me to come into work last night. I had to be there at 10 o'clock. So um, that's where I was. I spent my night, put in a nice 14 and a half hour day. Lovely. So if my eyes are red and bloodshot, I apologize. If I'm a mess and I look a wreck, I apologize. <laughs> but uh, I'm surprised I'm still awake. But uh, happy uh, National Sloppy Joe Day. I love Sloppy Joe. Sloppy Joe's rock. So if you are on your way home from work, stop at the store. Get yourself a pound, two pounds of ground beef. Get yourself a couple of cans of Manwich Bold Sloppy Joe mix and go to town. Oh, well, you're going to need some hamburger buns too. And maybe some shredded cheese. I like to put shredded cheese on my, gosh, Sloppy Joe's. I'm, now I'm getting hungry. And I got to do a show. We're only four minutes into this. Anyway, so have at it, all right? Uh, as they say in radio, programming note, Polly Z is coming back on the program. He is scheduled for Thursday, the 28th of this month. He's going to come in and uh, he's got a benefit show in April that we're going to talk about. We're going to plug. We want to give it a good plug. We want to get some eyes and ears on the episode so that uh, he gets a good turnout. Um, so yeah, he's coming back. I'm looking forward to that. He was great the first time around and, um, I expect nothing less 
next uh, next week when he's on. And then also put it on your calendar too. Friday Night Live is returning on March the 29th at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Okay. I'm giving you a heads up now. I'll I'll also remind everybody probably uh, either the day before and or the day of. Maybe both. Who knows? We'll put it out on Instagram. We'll put it out on all the socials. And so remind everyone. But Friday Night Live will be back. Yes, we took, uh, we've taken a couple of weeks off uh, just due to things that are going on and um, availability in the schedule, that kind of stuff. And, and it's just a fun show. It's not something that, that is supposed to be an every week thing. Um, but things to look forward to uh, next Friday will be the Malort Challenge, of course. So those who call in, it's my punishment. I've got to take a shot of Malort. Uh, we'll have Stump the Chump. So call in with your trivia, your, your music trivia. And uh, see if you can stump the chump. And if you do, there's another punishment in that. I've got to take a shot of Malort. Uh, but what I'm, I'm looking forward to the most, since we're right up against Easter, you all know what peeps are, right? And I, you know, I didn't bring any in studio here to show you, but I, you all know what peeps are. They're the marshmallow chicks, right? Well, they also have the bunny rabbits and they've got all kinds of different flavors now, all kind of stuff. Well, I'm going to do a peep pack on Friday Night Live. What is that you say? I'm going to see how many peeps I can cram into this pie hole and be able to close my lips without choking, gagging, or throwing up. How's that? All right? And if you want to join me on that, hey, feel free, okay? <laughs> it's it's going to be some 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 Easter fun with peeps. How's that? All right. So, uh, where are we? Oh, yes. So today's show, uh, I've been wanting to do this. I, I thought about it a couple of weeks ago and I thought, all right, I got to get this one in. Got to get it in. Got to get it in. Um, there are some albums, a bunch. There are a bunch of albums that are turning 40 years old this year. They came out, let me hit this right there, because we're going to say happy 40th anniversary to these albums. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I, now look, there's a whole bunch of albums that came out in 1984. I'm not going through the whole list of them. I picked 15 albums, and I tried pretty, I, I pretty much just stayed in the rock space, stuff that that my audience here, that you and I were familiar with, um, and I and I did throw in a couple of, um, uh, how should I put it, um, some some albums with status. I put in a couple of those. They've got some status. Uh, they were landmark albums for these artists. So we'll get into it. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's get into to the 15 uh, albums that we're going to say happy 40th anniversary to. All right. And let me get my spectacles on here. So I'll start right at the top. And now I don't have, I, I, I don't have all of, all of these albums. So I didn't bother to bring in album covers or CD covers or anything like that. Uh, I've got a lot of them. I don't have all, so I didn't want to cheat the, the artists that I didn't have the covers for. Besides, if you're listening at home or you're listening in your car, you're not going to see this anyway. But get a pen and paper and jot them down. Jot, jot the ones down that you're interested in. Maybe you forgot about. Maybe you haven't heard in a long time. And maybe this will, um, uh, maybe this will inspire you to go back and listen to these. All right. So again, starting uh, starting at the top here, and these are in no particular order at all. They're just 15. I just picked them out and boom. Um, let's see. Okay. Metallica, Ride the Lightning. It's their second album. It was released on July 27th of 1984. And uh, 
for all the Metallica fans out there. And I am not one. I have nothing against the band at all. I think that they're just a little too extreme for me. That's all. No big deal. And I don't go deep. I know I could probably tell you about half a dozen Metallica songs. And I think I own the Black Album. I'm not sure. I don't recall. I have so many. I just I just can't remember every single one of them. But uh, so I'm not going to pretend to be a Metallica fan and know these guys inside and out. All right. So the big songs on the album are, of course, uh, the title track, right? The Lightning, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Yeah, that gets that gets played on rock radio um, from time to time. And Fade to Black. And the interesting part about this, it's their second album. And it's like seven times platinum. I mean, I think that's pretty crazy. Although you, when you look at the Black Album, their biggest one, the biggest one in their catalog, I think that one has sold like 25 million copies. But, um, you know, that's an anomaly. Um, and that's, you know, that's just their biggest. They, they, have, they got their biggest commercial success with that album. And I think, um, how did it go? I'll be paraphrasing, I think, for the most part. But but when, that, when, when the Black Album was released uh, a short time after that, I guess James Hetfield or it was either James or it was Lars Ulrich. They, it was doing an interview and, and the person uh, conducting the interview had said something like, your fans are upset. They say you sold out because, you know, I, the, the, the black album is much more commercial than pretty much anything else in their catalog. And that much I know that's about it. Uh, <laughs> but, but they said, made that statement to them, your fans, you know, they said you sold out. And uh, like I said, it was either James or, or Lars said, yeah, we sold out every show. So <laughs> that was kind of funny. Um, but anyway, so first on the list, celebrating 40 uh, having a, or having a 40th birthday this year is Metallica's Ride the Lightning. All right. Okay, next is a monumental album in this artist's catalog. Uh, Prince and the Revolution, Purple Rain. It's Prince's sixth album. It was released on June 25th. And the singles, uh, When Doves Cry, Let's Go Crazy, I Would Die For You, Take Me With You, and of course the title track, Purple Rain, which is probably the biggest song on the album and has just, I, I don't think anybody would question just the tremendous guitar solo on it. And uh, that's the one thing that um, I probably miss most about Prince is his, uh, his ability to play the guitar. What a phenomenal guitar player. Mm, gosh, so good. I guess I just have to go on YouTube and watch the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction from whatever year it was when uh, Prince stole the show when they had the, um, uh, whatever they call it, uh, not, they don't call it a mashup, but when the, all the artists come together towards the end and they all start jamming and, uh, yeah, Prince stole the show that night. But anyway, so that, that album has sold 25 million copies worldwide. That is nuts. That's bananas. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Number three, Iron Maiden, Power Slave. It's Iron Maiden's fifth album, and it was released on September 3rd. Now, what's amazing about Iron Maiden is just like Metallica. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny when you look at the biggest bands in the world. And, and, and actually... I would say the three biggest bands in the world, and you could slot them anywhere, one, two, three, it doesn't really matter. They all released albums in 1984, and we're going to get to that. But you've got Metallica that absolutely needs no opening act and can go out and sell, sell out stadiums. They can sell out stadiums worldwide. You've got uh, Iron Maiden, which I'm going to be getting into this here 
who have not one radio hit. They have no radio hits at all. They don't get radio play at all other than like Run to the Hills or Aces High uh, or maybe on some specialty show that airs at like midnight or something like that on a Saturday or Sunday night. They might get, you know, play uh, something else in their catalog. But with no radio play, these guys are one of the biggest bands in the world. Again, they don't need an opening act either. They can go out and sell out. In America, they'll sell out arenas anywhere. 20,000 seat arenas, any place or anywhere else in the world, stadiums. And that's with no radio play. That's amazing. That is absolutely crazy. But, I mean, their fans are rabid. That That's... I can say that I don't I, I don't go deep into the Iron Maiden catalog at all. I know some of their songs. Um, I know I know about the band just from listening to. Um, I, I, as you guys know, I'm a big Eddie Trunk listener. And so th- there's a lot of Iron Maiden talk on Eddie Trunk's show on uh, on Sirius XM. So that's where my knowledge of the band comes from. That's about it. Okay. So I'm not going to pretend here, but you know, the big songs on that album were Aces High and Two Minutes to Midnight. Yeah. I've heard of those songs and I've heard Aces High. Uh, But like I said, I will never profess to be an uh, an Iron Maiden officiato. I'm not going to try to pretend or fake you guys out because someone will call me out and I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Um, And, but I'll tell you what, my good buddy, Greg Jernigan, would appreciate the fact that I have Iron Maiden as one of the 15 albums released in 1984. Right, Greg? Greg probably has never listened or watched one episode of this show, and that's okay. But Greg is somebody that I'm going to work on getting on this program because this guy is something else when it comes to music. Knows anybody and everybody in, in the business. He's great. He is so awesome. Uh, and we, we go back to high school. We used to sit across from each other in geometry and we would have our little spirited debates about music, you know, who was better, this or that. And Greg, Greg was, uh, uh, we had, we had a, a, a team of disc jockeys in high school and they would take turns playing music at lunchtime. We had an, uh, uh, a stereo in the administration office and and the PA speakers out in our quad area. So Greg was one of the the DJs, and uh, of course he would have to to bust out his Iron Mate, uh, Iron Maiden, and Judas Priest, and I don't remember if he ever played any Kiss, although he's a huge Kiss fan. Um, but anyway, I digress. So Iron Maiden is number three on my list. Okay, and like I said, these are in no particular order. I just grabbed them and jotted them down. Um, let's see. Number four, talking heads. Stop making sense. It was the, uh, it was a soundtrack to the concert film. It was their follow up to, uh, what was it? Speaking in tongues. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, that was released on September the 12th. It was, um, that soundtrack Stop making sense. That's actually the biggest album in the catalog for talking heads. It um, it went two times platinum, so good on them. Good on Talking Heads. I I actually would have thought it was the Speaking in Tongues album because it had the big hit um, "Burning Down the House," but nope, it's uh, it's stopped making sense. So there you go. All right. So next on the list, and we're gonna kind of veer off the path a little bit. But I, I put this one down just because it is a it is a landmark for this artist, uh, of which I don't own any music, okay? But I'm quite familiar, and that's Madonna, like a virgin. It was released on November the twelfth in 1984, so the back end of the year. Uh, of course, it's her second album. It's her biggest album, the biggest one in her catalog. It's a diamond album, which means that it's uh, sold 10 million copies or more. And the singles on it were the title track, uh, 
material girl and dress you up. So I was just kind of like when when I, when I when I thought of doing this and 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 I I just said you know albums turning forty or whatever it was I I put in my search, all these albums came up and I said okay well some of them I haven't heard of I know some of them my audience hasn't heard of so I'm gonna pick ones that I know everyone's heard of, but I still want to stay in the rock space of course outside of Madonna. Um, okay so flipping the page here. Let's see. A huge, huge one. Let's see. Ah, get it right. A huge one here. Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. It's It was uh, Bruce's seventh album. Was released on June the 4th. And this, is, this album itself, all by itself, is like a greatest hits album. Because there were... I do remember there were six um six top top 40 songs and then there were I know there were two other songs that they played on rock radio that that I don't believe broke the top 40 or the Billboard top 40. Um so the singles were the title track Cover Me I'm on Fire that's such a cool song. I just I dig that song. Uh Glory Days. Of course, I think most of us like that song. Uh, when we hear it, we get to harken back to our glory days, right? Dancing in the dark and my hometown. Those were the those were the 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 singles, and then the ones that were played on rock radio. I'm going down and no surrender. Um, this album has sold 30 million copies worldwide. That's crazy. So certainly Bruce's biggest album. Definitely Bruce's biggest album in the catalog. <clears throat> now I threw this one in here as well. Um, it is in the rock space. It's not one of the biggest albums of this art of this artist's catalog. Definitely not. In fact, it it was kind of a disappointment. Um, but tonight by David Bowie. It's his 16th album. And there was one song released from it, and it had a great video. It had, had a short video version and a long extended video version of uh, Blue Jean. That's such a good song. I like that song. But um, I'm just paraphrasing here. I was just reading something. But David had said that there was really no concept to the album. Um, and but 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 he said if you took a song here and took a song there and listened to them by themselves, they were pretty good. But putting it all together, the album just had no cohesion to it. So it was kind of a, it, it was, it was just jumbled and it was just kind of a disappointment. And it was, a, he was a little, um, yeah, disappointed in that. So that it did, it did hit platinum status. So, you know, David got that, but, but aside from that, it was kind of a disappointment in his catalog. Um, okay. Next on the list, Dio, the last in line. It's Dio's second solo album. Uh, it's the follow-up to 1983's Holy Diver. And it was released on July 2nd. The singles on it were the last in line. It was just a rock radio track, but the album did reach platinum status. And, um, I guess for again, I, I I know Ronnie James Dio. Uh, okay, I don't know him. I know of Ronnie James Dio. I know his music. I know his time in Black Sabbath. I know his time in Rainbow, and previous to that as well. I know some of his solo stuff. I don't go deep into the catalog. I like what I've heard, um, but you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and try to fake it. But as I said, I like what I've heard, and uh, I just, I just, I just don't go deep into it. Um, but it has been said that that the first two albums, Holy Diver and Last in Line, are probably the two best in his in, in Ronnie's solo catalog. So, um, yeah, and that album did reach platinum status. I just made these notes here. Uh, the next one, 
for all you Rush fans out there, is Grace Under Pressure. It was released on April 12th. And I believe this was the follow-up to Signals. And Rush is another band that was really big, really big, to, and, and covered a wide, uh, had a wide audience. As far, I mean, they had they leaned progressive. Not they didn't lean heavy metal, but they I guess what was it back in the seventies? I think somebody called it like acid rock or something like that. I, I can't recall, um, but but definitely lean toward the progressive side. And I don't go deep into Rush. I know a lot of their stuff, but I don't go deep into Rush. And I don't really know anything on this album at all. I have heard of, uh, no, actually, I haven't heard of any of the singles that were released off this album. And of course, they just went to rock radio. That was Red Sector A, uh, Red Lenses, and Between the Wheels. So to be honest, I couldn't tell you if I heard any of those songs. I stay more in the the... Power Windows, Roll the Bones, Moving Pictures, um, Signals, that kind of stuff. I, I know stuff off of those albums, but really nothing off of this one. And and it's not the it's not a big seller in the catalog. It did reach platinum status, but not a not a big not a big seller for uh, for Rush. Uh, let's see. Next, next is. Queen, The Works. Now that one's Queen's 11th album. And that's got the, it's funny because Queen was on a, Queen was on a downturn here in the United States at this time. You know, they, they were coming off of, uh, what was it? Hot Space. Uh, this was the, I believe this was the follow-up to Hot Space. And Hot Space didn't do much at all outside of Under Pressure. It had body language, which was in the top 20. But really, the, the Queen fans were a little disillusioned with that. You had more people that were leaning or that, that were pop leaning that were getting into what Queen was delivering at that time. So it was funny. They were on, kind of on a downturn here in the United States. But Radio Gaga was a it was a big song for Queen. It was the, it was the big song. Um, they had the big video, and then uh, at Live Aid, that was the, the that was the big performance at Live Aid was Radio Gaga. Had the whole crowd into it, just like the video, and um, yeah. So that was that was something, but. But not a not a big not a big um, not a big seller in their catalog. It reached gold status. But oh, and it did have one other one other hit. I think it well, it wasn't really a hit. It was a single that was released. But it was uh, I want to break free now. For me, I remember that song. I think it was mm, one of the cruise lines. I can't remember which cruise line it was. They they were they were playing that song on their commercials. Uh, maybe it was maybe it was Norwegian Cruise Line. I don't know, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, something like that. Uh, that's what I remember about that song. But uh, Radio Gaga is a great tune. I really enjoy that one. It's so good. Um, all right, so. Let's see. Ah, next on the list. The Cars, Heartbeat City. Yeah, it was their fifth album. And some people would think it's the biggest in their catalog, and it's not. It's actually right up there second or third. It depends, you know, on the exact number of sales. But it was released on March the 13th. The singles on it were, you might think, uh, Why Can't I Have You? Magic, which magic, such a cool song. Love that song. And uh, and Drive, the Benjamin Orr uh, song tune, the Benjamin Orr tune. Um, it's a great album. It like I said, it's maybe second or third in their catalog as far as sales. It's not quite what you would consider to be a greatest hits album. Close, 
But unlike their debut album, that that's a greatest hits album right there all by itself. That debut album is fantastic. And it's the biggest seller in their catalog. Um, the one thing, th now this album did reach, uh, it, it, it's four times platinum. But the one thing I thought was cool was the album was produced by Mutt Lang. And if you know about Mutt Lang and what he does when he produces an, a band's albums, he gets in there and he writes, he sings, he plays. Um, but he he does a lot of different stuff production wise. And you can see with Heartbeat City that there was a there was a big not not huge, but there was a musical difference in the production on Heartbeat City when you compare it to the uh, previous the previous four Cars albums. So I just thought that was kind of neat to uh, to see. So I, I figured I'd throw it in there. Uh, the next one. What a great album. Great artist. Love it. The Burner. Tina Turner. Private Dancer. And yeah, it's a little out of rock space, but Tina was a rocker. She was. She really was. She always wanted to be one. She presented herself that way. And even though she did some R&B and, you know, she really got into it. Um, so I, I will always love some Tina Turner. But that's her fifth, uh, Private Dancers, her fifth solo album. It was known as her comeback album. I think the one that she had released previous, I think this was the first one since 1979. Um, and the singles were, of course, What's Love Got to Do With It, the biggest song on the album. Uh, Better Be Good to Me. I think that one was co-written by Holly Knight. I think Holly Knight, Mike Chapman, who were songwriting partners. Yeah, I think they I think they co-wrote that one. Private Dancer, that one was written by Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits. That's kind of cool for those of you who didn't know that. Yeah, that's kind of a neat tidbit. And then, honestly, my favorite song on the album was released was released before the album was released. Um, I, I didn't jot it down. I can't remember exactly when the album was released. But in late 1983... Tina did a cover of Al Green's Let's Stay Together. And that is such a great song. That's a great cover version of that song. And if you're not familiar with it, check it out. It is so good. It's my favorite version of the song. Hands down. Hands down. Her, 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 uh, her vocal performance on that song is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And it's just such a such a good song. Uh, and it's Tina's biggest album, too. It went five times platinum. So good on her. It, that's a great album. Come on. Even all you rock and rollers, headbangers out there, all that, you have to admit, Tina Turner, she's badass. Uh, okay, let's turn the page here. Flip the script. Hmm. Got to figure out how I'm going to do a show on these guys. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But in 1984, U2 two released The Unforgettable Fire, their fourth album. And probably, I don't know. I love the War album. And I love The Unforgettable Fire album. Both fabulous albums. And you could see that U2 was starting to starting to go a little different direction uh, musically, still staying in the hard rock space, but 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 just going a little different musically on on the Unforgettable Fire. Although it's it's fabulous, I I, I love this album. Um, it was released on October the first. Um, the single on it, it really only had one single. Uh, to uh, to top forty radio, and that was of course Pride in the Name of Love. But there was uh, some other album tracks released to rock radio. Um, the title track, The Unforgettable Fire, got some airplay. Also had a great video behind it too. Wire, great song, 
And probably my favorite song on the album is Bad. And it's, uh, that's such a good song. It's, it's a great song on The Unforgettable Fire. And if you, if you can, can pick up or stream whatever, the live version, it's on Wide Awake in America. It's just a, it's just an EP. Man, the live version of Bad is just killer. It is just killer. Um, now, this, this album, The Unforgettable Fire, is kind of what really started to catapult um, U2. They, they finally became headliners with this album. I think I saw them, I see them twice on this tour. I can't recall. Might have been, it might have been, it might have been uh, the Joshua Tree. I saw them like two or three times, but but I saw them on this tour. Great show. Uh, but along with War, I, I don't know which ones, which ones one, which ones two for me. I just I love both of those albums. Um, but this one went three times platinum. And I started looking through U2's catalog just for kicks. These guys have four diamond albums. Four. That's nuts. And I'll say it again. Diamond means 10 million or more. That's crazy. Man. Some bands never get one. Some bands never get to a million sold. But to have an album, have, have one album that has sold 10 million and they have four. Again. I mentioned that there were three bands on here that were, I, I don't know, you could probably juggle them up in the air to see who's the biggest band in the world. U2 is one of those. So we had Metallica, Iron Maiden, and U2. U2 needs no opening act. And they sell out wherever they go. They can sell out stadiums anywhere in the United States, around the world. These guys are huge. They are huge. They, what, what did they just do? They were the first band to open up the Sphere in, in Las Vegas. And would they play like 40 or 42 shows or something like that? And uh, every one of, one of them sold out. And I think that's like an eighteen to 20,000 capacity uh, at the Sphere. I don't think I'll ever go to the Sphere because I don't want to pay the price. But uh, anyway, so yeah, U2, big album. Big album in 1984. All right. Um, the biggest album in this band's career. Huge album for this band. Van Halen, 1984. If I didn't, if I didn't put this one on the list, you guys would kill me. Somebody would come through the computer and choke me. Yeah. I like the album anyway, so it's okay. And I like Van Halen. But uh, so 1984, it was Van Halen's sixth album. It is their biggest. It's their biggest album. Um, it it was released uh, January 9th of 1984, and there there were you, you guys know the singles. They all they all got uh, they all got airplay uh, on top 40 radio. It was Jump, Panama, then I'll Wait, and Hot for Teacher. The whole album, top to bottom, is good. And I, I know some people, especially like, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say hardcores, um, but but there's some people that kind of turn their heads a little bit at 1984 because we, you had the introduction to the keyboards on this album. And it's not keyboard heavy, but you have 1984, the opening track, opens with keyboards. You've got... Jump comes right after that, opens with keyboards, and it's that that song itself is heavy keyboards, and of course I'll wait too is heavy keyboards, um, and and some some folks didn't really care for that a whole lot, but that album is so good, and it's a, it's a diamond album, ten million seller, and of course as we all know that was the last album with David Lee Roth uh, before he went his uh, his merry way until what was it. 2012 when when uh, they released uh, a different kind of truth yeah all right so the last album 
and I mentioned my buddy Greg. Greg would kill me, just like you would kill me if I didn't put Van Halen on this list. Greg would kill me if I didn't put this last album on the list. And I would kill me if I didn't put the last album on the list. Because if you haven't listened before, my my you know my two favorite bands and I, I have all of them you know of course with Foreigner and Loverboy and Uriah Heep and I love Aldo Nova and that's why I talk about these guys on the show so much and Journey and Kiss you know uh, there's more of them out there but since those ones have those ones are always top of mind um, that's why I can throw them out there real quick um, so yeah the last album is Kiss Animalize. It was released September 17th, 1984. It's it's uh, the 12th album for Kiss. And it's the second album, uh, Sans Makeup. The first being Lick It Up. This is the one to follow up, Lick It Up. It's the one and only album to feature Mark St. John on lead guitar. That was after two albums with Vinnie Vincent. Uh, and that was about all that Gene and Paul could take. So he was gone and uh, Mark stepped up next. <laughs> so that was the one and only album that Mark did with the band. And he only did, I think, two tour dates because he, he ended up with uh, writer syndrome. It's where his, I guess his hands and his fingers and his joints just swelled up. They blew up. He, I remember he, hearing him describe at one time, his hand blew up like a balloon. So he, he, he had a very difficult time playing. Uh, he was able to do two, two dates on that tour. And then in came Bruce Kulick, and he solidified the job and the position for know, 10 years, 12 years, something like that. And he did a phenomenal job. But getting back to Animal Eyes, it really only had one radio single, and that was Heaven's on Fire. It was not a top 40 single. But then, of course, Kiss never got played on top 40 radio. They, they barely ever get played on rock radio. So, so really, Heaven's on Fire was an MTV hit. There was a, a, a nice video behind it. And, and it got played on, I mean, it was regular rotation on, on MTV for, for quite a while. So it did real well there, um, which certainly would help drive sales on the album. It went platinum. Um, but some of the, some of the songs I really dig on, and I dig a lot of songs off of it. Um, uh, while the city sleeps, murder and high heels. I like those songs. Um, some people don't care for this album. And I, and I remember it was, I think it was number 15 on my on my uh my Kiss albums ranked. But I do like it a lot. And I know people complain about the lyrics to Burn Bitch Burn and I think they're very corny and cheesy too. So the one line I'm going to put my log in your fireplace. Yeah, I kind of like move past that one cuz I like the groove of the song. Mus musically it's a great it's a great groove it really is and and i like it and i like the uh i like the hook in it yeah but gene can be a little corny at times um my favorite song is i've had enough into the fire it's the opening track on the album i i think that one's that one's that one's my favorite song. And you see on this one, you see Kiss uh, almost getting a little, um, how do you, uh, how would I say it? Not heavy metal, but more into the, I guess, speed metal or something like that. Uh, yeah, a little bit. And, and there's, there they, they touch on it a little bit on this album. Uh, the album did end up going platinum. So it was a good seller for Kiss. And it was, you know, they, they were, they were, you know, trying to, they were resurrecting their careers at this time after a few, uh, duds starting with, um, I don't want to say starting with dynasty, although it was not a great seller. It was, uh, well, I guess we can say starting with dynasty. So you had dynasty you had unmasked. Um, then you had music from the elder, which I love great album. And then my number two album in their catalog is 
creatures of the night, not <laughs> that barely sold gold, but it's a great album. So anyway, good stuff. That's that's my 15 albums that we're gonna say happy 40th birthday to for the year 1984. Yeah, turning 40 this year. Congratulations to them. Let's see if any of these artists will do anything special. Uh, or if the if the record companies, uh, if they if the record companies own these, if they'll do anything special, put out anything great for uh for the anniversary of these albums. We'll see what happens. Um Again, let me remind everyone before we cut out of here that if you when you're done watching this, make yourself a sloppy joe. Have a sloppy joe on me, okay? And think of me as you're biting into it. It it is National Sloppy Joe Day, so there you go. But but I do want to remind everyone that Polly Z is coming back on the program. We're going to record that show Thursday March 28th. So by, by mid afternoon, that show will be up and ready to go. Okay. You'll probably get your notifications and all that kind of stuff. So look for that one. And then on Friday, March 29th, 7 p.m. Pacific time, Friday Night Live comes back. And we've got all the regular shenanigans, the Malort Challenge, Stump the Trump, uh, Stump the Chump. And uh, and a peat pack, all right. And then whatever else we, you know, whatever else we can get into. Uh, so don't forget about that, all right. I want to put that plug out there ahead of time. I never do that because sometimes I just go, I just fly by the seat of my pants. So I don't, I don't think about that. But I was able to 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 put that together today and say, hey. I can plug a couple of future shows. Yeah. <laughs> prime prime the pump a little bit and get everybody ready for them. So that's what we're doing. All right? So that's a wrap. That's a wrap for National Sloppy Joe Day, okay? Again, this program is available on multiple podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Spotify. Or just search the Ben Maynard Program and choose your option. You'll have many options to choose from, but go to Buzzsprout first, all right? Um, If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. I appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, please. Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment, all right? As always, you know I'm going to read your comment if you leave one. Even if you tell me I suck, even if you tell me I blow it, even if you tell me I don't know what I'm doing, How could I do this? How could I do that? How could I forget this? How could I forget that? Okay. You know, I'll do it. Um, And last but not least, follow me on Instagram, Ben Maynard Program. So look, with that, let me get my mouse right here so I can, so I can stop record. But um, yeah, we're done. I thank you so much for being here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is the Ben Maynard program. Tell a friend. And bye.